Welcome. In this lecture, we are going to be looking at the very basics of using Unity physics, using the components, the collider, and the rigid body, the basics of physics. And we can make a little scene like this where two objects interact with each other, just as you saw there, that, that ball rolling off the end of the cannon that we're going to be using later on in this game. OK, let's dive right in. So the very first thing we want to do in this video is go ahead and get our asset pack for this entire section. So if, like me, you are on this current lecture, you know, the rigid body and for gravity and collisions, I know what you're thinking. How is he possibly on this lecture? He's currently recording it. Well, that, guys, is done through the magic of time travel. Well, not really. As you can see, this is a placeholder lecture, but what you want to be doing is going to the, you can see this little resources available, and that's always a sign that you should be downloading something or checking something out. And here we have the physics asset package.zip. So just go ahead, click that, download that, and then click on it to extract. We want to hit the extract button on Windows, on Mac, it's a very similar process. You have to right click to extract it. And then we extract, select a destination, downloads, that seems fine. I will extract, and there is my asset. OK, so next up, we want to import it in Unity. To import it in Unity, we go to Assets, Import Package, not Import New Asset, but Import Package, and then Custom Package. We've done this stuff before. Then you go to Downloads, you open the folder, you click on the Asset Package, and you hit Open. And what do we get? Well, we've got this li list of lovely scripts and assets and models that I have already put together for you to make this section a breeze and really help us focus on the physics. So hit import. You will have a new folder called a Physics Asset Package created, and this is split up into some of the components that we will be using by the end of the section to have a little fun game of shooting cannon, a shooting projectile cannon. And this will take us over all the different aspects that we need to see in this physics course. So, or this physics subsection, I should say. So what we want to do, first of all, is create a projectile. So let's do that. Let's go into what's going to be a good basis for a projectile. Well, I think a sphere is a good basis for a projectile. So I'll right click here, go to 3D object and get us a sphere. Now, right away, I'm going to rename this to projectile. Don't forget to hit enter to make sure that rename sticks. And I'm going to just play, take a look at what we've got. OK, very, very boring projectile. But that's why I want to introduce the concept of a rigid body. Now, if you go to add component and then go to rigid body and add that in, you'll notice we add in this component called, funnily enough, a rigid body. And some of the properties about it should give you an indication as to what it does. It simulates rigid body physics. That means the type of physics that applies to things like marbles, to cups, mice, and keyboard, but not squidgy bodies like water, not squidgy bodies like those disgusting child children's toys that get stuck everywhere. So it won't simulate that sort of stuff, but it does simulate, so it won't simulate deformation of the body, basically. But you notice it has mass, it has drag, it has angular drag, and it has gravity. So if we hit play now, you'll notice our ball accelerates away out of sight and disappears. And you'll also notice that there is something called a collider here. So the collider has been added along with the rigid body as part of that sphere object we used to create our projectile. And the collider would be able to impact with other objects to stop it from moving. Now, just to show you, if we disable the Use Gravity checkbox and hit Play, the rigid body is just going to stand there and not really do anything. And similarly, if I check Is Kinematic, it's also just going to stand there because what Is Kinematic means is simply that we're going to be moving it in code. And that is also necessary. So if we are going to be moving Anything that has a collider on it, we need to have a rigid body and it needs to be kinematic. That just tells the physics system that it's something that can move and that it will need to be thinking about recalculating things. Otherwise, it can be a little bit inefficient. If you're moving a collider that has no rigid body, Unity thinks that that's going to be static and things might not work quite as you imagine they will. So we want it unchecked because this is not a kinematic rigid body. It is an ordinary rigid body, one that reacts to gravity and is moved around by the physics system. We'll go into more detail about that property later on. 
So it is time for your challenge. I'd like you to make a cannon for this sphere to collide with. We're going to need a cannon later on in the game, but just to show you how objects interact with each other with rigid body physics, I'd like you to create your own cannon. So use a primitive to generate the cannon. I'm sure you can think of some primitives that would work for you. And I'd like you to place it underneath the projectile that you've that we've just created here and that you'll be creating in just a second and have it interact with that projectile. So you need to ensure that the two collide and see what happens when that happens. So pause the video and have a go. Okay, welcome back. Let's dive in to making that projectile collide with the cannon. So I'm going to lift it up a little bit so I can stick the cannon underneath. I'm going to deselect the projectile, otherwise we'll keep making that error I keep making of making a sub-object to the projectile. And then we right-click, go to 3D object, and then we go to cylinder. So I think a cylinder is the perfect object to be a projectile. We go select the rotate tool and rotate it round by, I don't know, let's have it pointing up slightly. And I'm going to use the scale tool to and make sure that we're using local scaling to scale that cannon out a bit. And I'll go back to the move tool to make sure it's underneath our ball. Now if I hit play, oh, that's hard to see because our camera is on the wrong side. So let me just re-rotate all of that and move it around a little bit so that we are actually putting it underneath our ball for a start. That would be a good start. And that we can see what's going on from the camera rather than previously. It just blocking our view. Perfect. So you can see that it's bouncing right off the cannon. That was pretty simple. Now the reason that that's happening is that when you added this primitive cylinder into the scene, the cylinder already had something called a capsule collider, which we can see in green very lightly here is this object just around the edges of the cylinder. You can't see it very well because the cylinder is pretty much obscuring it. But if we go into wireframe, in um, scene mode, uh, shading mode, so you click on where it said shaded, instead of selecting shaded, you select wireframe. Now you can see it much clearer. You can see in gray is our mesh, but in green is our collider. And that is what the sphere, our projectile, which also has a similar green mesh, is interacting with. And because our cylinder doesn't have a rigid body, it isn't falling, it's staying static in place. It's what's known as a static collider. Now let's rename that cylinder to something more meaningful like cannon. And I think we will just save our main scene now. Control S. And I think we'll leave it there at this lecture. You can go on to the a few quiz questions after you are done with this lecture and then move on and we will be doing more with this canon.